This is Algebra 2 with Trig, Chapter 5.1. We're working on properties of exponents. So some of these properties, we have the product of powers property. The A represents the base. So when you're multiplying two bases that are the same, you add the exponents. When you're raising a power to the power, you're going to multiply exponents. So the difference between the two of these, this one here would be multiplying a times a times a times a a certain amount of times. And then you also multiply a times a times a times a another amount of times. So you have a total of the number of a's for as many of those added together. In this case, what's occurring is you have a to the m power this amount of times. So you have a to the m times a to the m times a to the m. That's kind of the difference between those two properties. Here, when we have a parentheses and your exponent on the outside, we can distribute that to each of the inside exponents. Since they're not written, that means they're both a 1. So this is a to the m, b to the m. Now, don't get that confused with distributing into a binomial. If you have x plus 3 and it's squared, that is not the same thing as distributing it in to say x squared plus 9. You could not do that. You have to write it out twice. Okay, this is squaring a binomial. This squares a binomial. This is, perhaps, if it was a 2, it would be squaring a monomial. Okay, what happens if you have a negative exponent? If it's a negative exponent, you put it into the denominator. If you have an exponent that's a 0, that's always going to be the value of 1. Now here, if your bases are the same, we're going to subtract exponents. And very similarly as before, if you have parentheses, we're still going to distribute that exponent to both of the exponents inside the parentheses. So this is a to the nth power and b to the nth power. What's important to recognize is you can go either way. Sometimes we distribute it into it, but there'll be some problems. If the bases are the same, then we can pull it to the outside. So you can consider it going both ways, whichever in the problem helps you. So here, there's a couple different ways we could think about this. Notice the bases are different, so we cannot subtract exponents. But we can distribute our exponent into it. So this is 1 to the negative 8th power and 3 to the negative 4th power. The negative power tells us to put it into the opposite side. It's kind of like a negative attitude, and you want to put it to a positive attitude, so you've got to move it. So we're going to put it to the positive side, so that's going to bring it up to the top, and that's going to bring this one down to the bottom. 3 to the 4th power is 81, over 1 to the 8th power, which is 1, and that's uh, no need to put a 1 down there. So just 81, you can even leave it 3 to the 4th. Here we have all the bases the same. So when you have the bases the same, we just add the exponents together. So that's going to be w to the negative third plus 6, which is w to the third. The other way you could think about this 
is you have w to the fifth. So you're going to have five w's. You have a negative eight for your exponent. So that means you have eight w's on the bottom. And then you have w to the sixth which tells you you're going to have six more W's on top. Then you could start to go through and reduce those. And while you're doing so, you'll see what you have left. I have too many W's on top. I have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when I cross those off, I'm left with W to the third power. Now you can tell that's a lot more tedious way to get to your answer, or you can just add the exponents. Whichever method makes sense to you and you can be consistently accurate. What do you think we do first in this case? So we'll distribute the 2 into both exponents. So c to the negative 2 and d to the positive 8. Because the c has a negative exponent, it becomes c squared with d to the 8 stays there. And you need to have some sort of place value on top. Since everything seems to go away from the top, you're just leaving a 1 there. Simplifying here, a couple different ways you could think about it. Here you have base is the same, so you could subtract exponents. Or because it's a negative exponent, you can bring it to the bottom. Whichever method you see. So because you brought the a to the third to the bottom, we now have... eight A's on bottom. Five plus three is eight. Now here with the parentheses, you're just multiplying essentially the terms that are the same. So you have a number here, there's no coefficient for the other one, so it's seven times one, which is seven. The y's, when you multiply y's together, you add exponents. So y, this would be 2 plus a negative 4, which leaves you with a negative 2. And the z's, 5 plus a negative 1, leaves you with a 4. This is not FOIL. You don't distribute it through. You just multiply your terms that are alike, your terms that are alike, now notice that the y has a negative exponent. It has a negative exponent. That means the y is going to go to the bottom. The 7 and the z have positive exponents, so they stay on top. Here we got a couple different ways we could do this. If you would want to clean up the inside first and then work with the exponent, you could do that. Notice that you have two A's on top, three A's on bottom. Which number's bigger? The three. How much? It's one bigger. So you have an A left on bottom after those reduce. You have a negative two that's on bottom. Notice it has a positive exponent. It does not have a negative exponent. The number's negative, but it's not a negative exponent, so it stays where it's at. You have a b squared, and you have a b to the first, 
We're actually at negative 1, which means it goes to the bottom to make that a 3. Which means everything is moved away, so there's just a 1 on top, to the 3rd. Then we would distribute this to every exponent. So that's going to be 1 to the 3rd, which is 1. That's going to be negative 2 to the 3rd, a to the 3rd, and b to the 3 times 3. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. a cubed, b to the ninth. Notice how all of these have work to be shown. You shouldn't be producing these complicated simplifi simplifications without showing any work. Show your work. Demonstrate your understanding. It's going to help you out on quiz day. Okay, what do you think here? going to distribute that negative through. So you're going to get 8 to the negative 5. You're going to get 8 to the negative 2. You could do this a couple different ways. If you like to move the negative exponents around, you could do that. Here you could actually think about this is 8 to the 2 minus 5 which is 8 to the negative 3, which is 1 over 8 to the 3rd, which if, if you like to multiply that out, I believe that's 1 over 512. Last one on this side. Here, notice the dot is saying that we're multiplying two fractions together. It's not important to even keep them separated. You could consider this one solid fraction if you wanted to. We'll work with the first fraction. Look at the x's. How can I simplify the x's? There's an extra x on bottom, so when you reduce that, you have an x on bottom. The y is negative, so it's going to go to the bottom also, which is going to put two of them at the bottom. That means everything went away from the top, so there's just a value of 1, a place value holder on top. Now, I talked about how you really don't need two fractions. So we're going to multiply by 7. We still have x cubed, and the negative exponent brings the y to the top. Now we can clean up what we have here. We have a 7 on the top. Our x's, we have two extra x's on top, and we have two extra y's on top. Nothing's left in the denominator, so you don't need to have a value down there. Okay, on the back side, we're going to talk about scientific notation. A number is expressed in scientific... I'm sorry. Scientific notation, that's going to look like a times 10 to the b power, where the a is greater than or equal to 1. It can be 1, but it can't be a number less than 1. And it cannot be a two-digit number, so it has to be less than 10 and that the b is an integer. 
So for these first few examples, we're going to write it in scientific notation. So notice, the decimal point would be considered out here for 85 million. We need to write the number so that it is between 1 and less than 10. So we're going to come over 7 decimal spots. So we now have 8.5. So you're looking at the 8.5. What do we need to do? Are we going to times it by 10? Or are we going to divide it by 10 to make it equal 85 million? We're going to times it by 10. We're going to have to do that 7 times because every 10 moves at a place value. So that's why this is a positive 7, not a negative 7. Because you're going from scientific notation to your real number, to the right, it's a positive exponent. You're timesing 8.5 by 10, seven times, to get 85 million. Here we need to move our decimal spot over. And we're going to have 6.7. So if we have 6.7, what do we have to do? What do we have to do with the 10? Do we have to multiply it to make it that teeny number? Or do we have to divide 6.7? Of course, when we move the decimal spot to the left to produce the number, it's going to have a negative exponent. Which, remember, the negative exponent means that you are dividing, not multiplying. So you're going to make the final answer small because you're moving it over five spots. Okay. Here, you could probably just use a calculator and figure these values out, but we're trying to use a exponent rules when we work with it. So first of all, when you multiply, you multiply the numbers that are alike. So you have 3.4 times 2.8 and that comes out to be 9.52. So when you multiply those two numbers, we have 9.52 times 10. When the bases are the same, you add exponents. Here in this case, this is 5.8 times 10 to the negative 6 to the fourth power. That means essentially we would have four sets of parentheses. The way we can handle this is there's no adding or subtracting going on here, so we can distribute our four through. So this is 5.8 to the fourth power, and this is 10 to the negative sixth, also to the fourth power. So this comes out to be 1,131.6, and this is 10 to the negative 24th. Now, scientific notation tells us that we need the A value to be between 1 and less than 10. So I need to consider moving my decimal spot 3 more to the left. Now, what would the negative 24 mean? Negative 24 would have told us from this point here, between the 1 and the 6, we needed to go 24 spots, place values, to the left. Left because it's negative. So if we had to go 24 way out here, but now we've moved it to this location, do we have to go more than 21? or 24 or less. So because we moved it three decimal spots to get it between the one and the one, I'm gonna make this a 21. It's three values less. You're really adding three to negative 24. Here, when you take the 4.6 and divide that by the 
point 0.2, we get the value of point 0.5. When you take 10 to the 7th, negative 7th actually, and 10 to the negative 9th, that becomes 10 to the 9th over 10 to the 7th, because you have negative exponents, they want to go to the opposite side. You have more tens on top than you do on bottom by 2. So this is 0 0.5 times 10 squared. Well, if that's 10 squared, we're going to move the decimal spot to the right. Times 10 would be 5, and times 10 would be 50. But look at the 0 0.5. We're not supposed to have a value less than 1. So we actually got to say 5 times 10. Now, if we were supposed to go 2 to the right to begin with, and we've already gone 1 to the right, how many more do we need to go? So because we moved it once, we're going to take one away from this. Because we moved it to the right, this actually gets smaller. Here, let me mention this. Scientific notation. If we look at this, this of course means 50. And scientific notation is really meant for numbers that are extremely big or extremely small. It doesn't make a lot of sense to use scientific notation for a number like 50, 5, 0. But when you're dealing with this number here, where you're going to have 20 additional zeros before these values, the scientific notation helps you keep track of that. But when it's a nice, simple number like 50, it's kind of silly to even consider that to be scientific notation. Sometimes we do this in scientific notation with easier numbers just to help you understand what's happening and how they work. Okay, Iceland covers about 1.03 times 10 to the 5th square kilometers and has approximately 294,000 people. About how many people are there in a square uh, kilometer. So the way you calculate that out is your population divided by your area. That will tell you the number of people per the area. So we're going to say 2.94 times 10 to the fifth. Now where did that number come from? That was your people. And your people, we had to move the decimal spot over five times to get 2.94 because we wanted a scientific notation between 1 and less than 10. And because we moved it 5, you look at the scientific notation and what does it take to make the real number? You have to times it by 10, five different times to make that. So that's why it's a positive 5. And we're dividing this by 1.03 times 10 to the fifth. That was the square kilometers. So when you calculate this out, here we'd still have 2.94 times, or divided by 1.03 times 10 to the 5 minus 5 because you would subtract exponents if your bases are the same. So that comes out to be 2.85 times 10 to the 0, which is 2.85 as your value. So it's 2.85 people per kilometer. Now that's not very many people. And don't get frustrated by it being a decimal. No, there's no 0.8 of a person walking around. It's just an average. Okay, and then we're going to end with the Federal Gold Reserve. The gold bars weigh what's called 400 troy ounces. And they have a whole bunch of them. So how can we put this together? So uh, we're going to look at this in terms of scientific notation. We're going to move the decimal spot over 2 to get 4 times 10 to the second. We're going to move this 
exponent over 5 times to get 2.6 times 10 to the 5th. And when you multiply these together, you say 2.6 times 4, which gives us 24, 8, 9, 10, so 10.4. And because the bases are the same, we add the exponents. Now we know we need to go one more to get our scientific notation a term between 1 and 10. That's a little bit over 10, so we need it to be less than 10. That means we're going to have to multiply by even an extra 10 to move it to the same location. Good luck.